Hey guys, welcome. Um, I know for the past few days we've had um, some break in science class because I was sick with tonsillitis, but I am recovering and I'm back. So yay. And this time we're actually going to start talking about a new topic, very exciting, it's evolution. Um, as you all know, evolution is a process that occurs over a long, 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 long time. Um, it takes years and years and generations upon generations to actually occur. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean that it's not happening over the several years. It is happening, but we just cannot see it until a very long period of time. And since humans have a relatively short lifespan of only about 70 to 80 years on an average, it's very much possible that we miss um, major evolutionary changes that's happening in the world um, with other living creatures. Now let's think about an example of polar bears. Um, did you ever wonder why polar bears are actually white but not brown? So this is actually because we want polar bears to kind of um, blend in into their environment, right? They live um, in Arctic ice and snow and they are surrounded by ice and snow. So they want to be white. They want to make sure they can survive. And having white fur gives them a lot of advantage. Um, it allows their prey to kind of not see them when they are hunting. Um, and it allows them to survive and that fur on their body keeps them um, keeps them insulated and warm, right? And as millions and millions of years passed and generations upon generations um, of polar bears survived and reproduced, natural selection kind of occurred uh, in the bear population. And this allowed them to have wider and wider fur um, as they moved down the generations. Um, and evolutionary concepts like adaptation and natural selection is what we're trying to actually cover, cover in this um, unit. Now, if you look over here, um, let's see what evolution and adaptation is. Now, from what I've already said, we know that evolution is uh, kind of like the process, how adaptation occurs in organisms over time. Um, and that is the key point. It happens over time. It does not happen like that. We cannot see that. Um, even if it does happen, there's no way to actually um, understand or to actually observe how that happens. Uh, these processes usually take years and generations. Um, and what happens is there will be a genetic modification or uh, something similar that happens in an organism. And that kind of becomes a trait that is passed down from that parent to their offsprings. So it's an inherited trait. And that is what is known as adaptation. So it's the trait that when inherited helps an organism to survive. It increases their chances of survival, right? So that's how adaptation and evolution works. Um, through evolution, of course, organisms of the structure, the structure of organisms also uh, kind of adapts to modify their functions. Now, let's think about our own body. There are so many things in our body that we don't need. For example, uh, let's see. Our, uh, our appendix, right? Uh, we can remove our appendix. It's a vestigial organ. We don't need it to survive. But once upon a time, we probably did, right? But as our environment changed, as we changed, um, our ancestors' body changed. There, gen there were genetic modifications which were passed down from our ancestors to their offsprings and to their offsprings and eventually to us. Um, that enables us to survive without having to need the appendix. Uh, the same can be said for hair. Um, once upon a time, we needed hair to survive. We could not bear to survive cold climate without having hair all over our body. Probably why ancestors were hairy. But now, we don't need it to survive. We have coats, we have houses, we have proper heaters, which allows us to survive without hair. And now you will see that as you go down and down the generations, our bodies become lesser and lesser hairy. So that's what adaptation is. That's what evolution is. Um, and um, as we just said, ancestors are literally just organisms that have um, that pass down these inherited genes. Um, and we kind of try to figure out the relationship um, 
uh, among living species and their ancestors through a diagram. And that kind of diagram is actually known as a cladogram. So if you look over here, I know it's not very clear, but this is a, an example of a picture or a diagram of a cladogram. Um, and it tells us about the relationship between the current living species and their ancestors. Now, if you look over here, it kind of looks like a tree branch, right? So this is a cladogram and it kind of looks like a tree branch. And each branch actually uh, shows us a different uh, evolutionary path. Um, each path is unique to its own ancestors or to its own living creatures. Um, and the point where two branches kind of come together, um, that is a point uh, that represents a common ancestor. For example, if you see on this branch, the point that comes over here, now this is one branch and this is another branch, and the point that comes together or joins together, that depicts or represents a common ancestor um, that shares evolved characteristics with species that branches off from it. Now, uh, if you go on, give me one second. All right. So if you think about it, there is actually a timeline that we follow, right? Um, now, from our previous chapters, we know that our Earth is about 4.6 billion years ago. And we know this because of fossil records. Now, the first light that uh, appeared was actually about 3 billion years ago in form of really, really tiny celled prokaryotes. Now, from prokaryotes to our, us right now, for that to happen there must be some kind of evolution right now if you look in this image right here you can see that at first there was just very simple um life molecules or something that showed um maybe possibility of life but eventually these adapted and evolved over and over and over uh first they did not have any nucleus then they evolved with something into larger cells that had nucleus um which eventually reproduced and become and had maybe organelles right if you see over here and then they were first eukaryotic cells and then they became something that are multicellular um, then we had plants, animals, dinosaurs, mammals, ancestors, our ancestors, which are humans, and so on. So that's how evolution works. Um, and we are going to talk about more of this in more detail later. But for now, I just want you guys to kind of read over the materials that are for today and try to complete the guided practice and infant practice. And I will see you guys later. Bye.